Well guys, we're out here on a dairy today. It's actually a farm that I've made a few videos on before, um, shooting other pest species, but um, we're out here today for a specific purpose. We've got awesome weather. There's not much wind right now. I believe the wind is gonna pick up quite a bit later, but to start off, we've got the short FX impact with a 600 millimeter slug barrel. This gun's getting about 75 um, shots per fill with 23 grain slug. So it's very efficient, it's gonna give us many shots and I think we're gonna need it because we're after the little guys today. We've got house sparrows in the thousands um, flying around here. They're getting into the dairy where they are milking the cattle just over there. And then we've also got sparrows and doves in an area where they are keeping calves. Calves that are obviously they're raising to become milk, um, milk cows at some point. So this is gonna be a really good tool for that. But when the wind picks up, I'm gonna opt for something a little bit more powerful. I'm seeing sparrows everywhere, I'm seeing doves everywhere. Let's get out there and get some down before the wind picks up. Let's see how we do. In the previous episode, we focused on the rock pigeons in the feed pads, but today our focus is on smaller pest birds in the area where the calves are kept. The calves are fed every day, and this obviously attracts unwanted birds that can spread disease. It's not long until I have my first opportunity, and it's an invasive European starling. Next up we have a house sparrow, also invasive, and you'll see here as I take the shot that there is a bit of wind. Those feathers get blown out of frame pretty quickly. The setup with the 23 grand slugs is deadly accurate, pretty much perfect for pest control like this, and although there is wind, that isn't really enough to affect the trajectory much. So it's center of mass for these little guys. Eventually we come across something a little bit bigger. This is a laughing dove, and this is something that isn't an invasive species and isn't always regarded as a pest, but can cause similar problems in large numbers and is often hunted for food. Here's a shot I'd taken the previous day and excuse the poor audio here, but this is worth listening to. So we managed to get a laughing dove down there. I want to talk a bit about a laughing dove because it's very different to the pigeons that you get to see um, in other parts of the world and very different to the doves you get to see in other parts of the world. It's one of our indigenous species of doves. So here's the bird I just shot. As you can see, it's, it's quite small. It's one of our smaller species of doves. We've got a lot of doves in South Africa. Um, laughing doves, mourning doves, red eye turtle doves, cape turtle doves, lemon doves, tambourine doves. African olive pigeons, lots of different pigeon and dove species. This is one of the smaller ones. You can see the nice coloration there on its chest. Um, although it's small, I must say that it's one of the nicer tasting birds. So if you do get a few of these, you can make a really good pie. And I know it seems like these may not be as big of an issue as the pigeons. I'd say they probably aren't because I don't think they eat quite as much being smaller birds. But you've got to remember that pigeons seem like they're a bigger problem because they stay in flocks. Doves don't stay in flocks. Doves gen generally stay by themselves or in a group of, you know, two or three. So you don't realize how big the problem is until you actually do a count and you realize that they're just as many doves as pigeons. You just don't see them as often because they're a little bit more cons uh, inconspicuous. But I'm seeing a few more pigeons and a few more doves around. So let's, uh, let's move on and see if we can get some more. Well, guys, we've had a really good start to the day. Uh, this gun's performed performed really well. We've been able to smash some, some doves and some um, sparrows, but unfortunately the wind's getting a bit too much. Um, yes, although we're shooting slugs and they, they do better in the wind than pellets, they still do drift in the wind. And so you want to capitalize on, on whatever um, equipment is best for the job. And this gun, I'm afraid it's good, but are we going to do a bit better if we get the, the big boys out with the 30 grand slugs? They drift a little bit less in the wind. They're going to give us a little bit more, more distance. And the scope on that gun is, is better than this one. I think the scope on, the, on my other impact is able to focus down to about, I think, 10 yards. <laughs> this one only goes down to 25. So for those really close shots, you're not going to be able to get a, a clear sight picture on camera, which kind of sucks for you guys. So I'm going to switch guns. I'm going to put this gun away. I'm going to head back to the house behind me there and fetch the other gun and we're gonna head back out and, and see what we can get. But yeah, it's been a really good day so far. I'm enjoying just being out in the sun, surrounded by mountains, uh, typical kind of Eastern Cape, South Africa scene, something that I'll never grow, grow tired of. Um, and as you can see, I got a big smile on my face. Day's going well, and most importantly, I'm having fun. So let's do the switcheroo, get the other gun and see how we do. I set up in a new position on a comfortable patch of grass, overlooking the fences that surround the house. The sparrows really like these fences, so I'm expecting to get quite a few with my beast of an impact shooting 30 grand slugs. 
Okay, so this is our new perch. It's comfortable, we've got some nice green grass here, so I can basically just relax <laughs> and uh, see what comes my way. Um, my setup is pretty simple. I've got the gun on a bipod here, I've got the scope cam attached, um, I've got a little uh, piece at the back here that can move up and down, and I've got a sandbag. So I can get really steady. I don't think uh, getting steady will be an issue. I think the issue is gonna be the wind and having to shoot quickly without having time to calculate. I've got a rangefinder in my pocket here. I've got an anemometer that I can use to, to measure the wind speed, but when you've got birds landing and then flying off a few seconds later, you don't have time to do all that stuff. So the best I can do is actually range certain points over here where I, where I think they might land, do the calculations beforehand so that when they land, I can just hold quickly and take a shot. That's, that's my best bet, I think. But um, yeah, let's just wait for them to land and, and see if we can get a few down. Oh, ha. there's nothing left of him. Goodness me, that hits hard. I suppose 30 grand slug on a little sparrows, but overkill, but you know, I've said it a hundred times, I'll say it again. You don't get such thing as overkill when you're um, doing pest control because you want a humane kill. Um, yep, so happy with that. <laughs> There's not much left of that sparrow I just shot. That is all that remains. So that's pretty hectic. Um, yeah, let's get back to shooting. The wind is really pumping now and I'm not sure if the wind's to blame for the next one or whether it was my gun, but he escapes with nothing more than a few missing feathers. I couldn't believe that I missed this one, but she was actually so close that the slug passed right underneath her. She must have been about 10 meters or less. The next one's from a similar distance, but this time I get it right. And it's quite convenient to have some fence poles to rest on as well. It allows me to get a little bit closer and to avoid having to hold for wind. Right, well, got a few down. Really happy with that. Um, the wind is really pumping now. I almost wish I'd got up a bit earlier and spent, you know, another hour um, shooting some of the pests, but I'm just exhausted. I've been, <laughs> I've been out here for a few days now, so I've had, a, I've had enough of early mornings. <laughs> I've seen a, a decline in uh, bird numbers as the winds picked up. I don't think the sparrows like um, the strong wind, and that's very understandable considering how small they are. They probably get blown around quite easily. So I'm going to head back to the little uh, cattle, uh, the, the, the place where the calves are kept, um, and see if I can find a few doves there. And I think we'll I think we'll have some success for sure. So back out again to the calves, and immediately I see some movement on the ground. It's those darn starlings again. <laughs> I have to be cautious shooting birds on the ground as the calves are moving around them but they move off and give me a window and I take the opportunity. The slug barely nicks the starling, but the hollow point opens up nicely and ensures a pretty clean shot. Aha, and here come the laughing doves again. These birds were all shot out of the same tree within a minute or so of each other and they were also pretty close so again you see the slug impacting a bit low. Doves are pretty soft though, they don't put up much of a fart like pigeons do and they're dead on the spot. And then I see this. No, I'm not going to shoot it, I'm just filming it. But do you know what it is? Probably not. Let's talk about it. Well, that was super cool, guys. That was, I believe, a Namaqua dove. I've actually never seen one in real life. I've only ever seen one in bird books. I don't get them where I'm from, um, but up here, a little bit north in the mountains, um, you apparently get Namaqua doves, so that's awesome. 
obviously it's one of the birds that we don't shoot there are many doves and, and pigeon species in south africa most of them we don't shoot though so the ones that you see the red eyed turtle doves the uh, cape turtle doves the laughing doves um those are all um, species that are really plentiful and that we are allowed to shoot all year round with no bag limit it's very important to stick within your hunting regulations obviously the conservationists that write the hunting laws know how many numbers there are for each species and they're able to um, determine how many can be shot safely without the numbers dwindling so obviously they reassess that every year and they release a new hunting gazette with the the bag limits and the hunting seasons and the, the macro dove is one of the doves that we can't shoot but all the other ones are well the the ones that we've been talking today the laughing doves the cape turtle doves etc are doves that can be shot all year round and those are the ones that we're going after and obviously the less um laughing doves there are the more and the macro doves they can be because they're competing for the same food source so that's pretty cool hope we can see them again and um, just wanted to share that with you really really cool at first glance i thought this was a morning dove but after looking closely I realized it was a female Namaqua dove. It's amazing how their colors can vary and it's a reminder to always be careful what you shoot. Thankfully the long tail is a dead giveaway so I know it isn't one of the shootable doves and I leave it well alone. I get two more opportunities on laughing doves but a combination of a shaky rest and high wind and I miss both. Time to return to the house I think. Here's a good example of uh, some of the problems that the birds cause around the farmhouse. Um, obviously, you've got perches up here, just areas where the birds can land. So if they're flying around here and they come for shelter here in the house, you end up with droppings all over the place. Droppings on the floor, droppings on the, on the table, and droppings on the shelves. And that's just really unpleasant, especially around an area where you're preparing food. We've got the bra over there, we've got the food table over here. You can't have that. So. I'm going to be sitting down there in the, the corner at the back there. You may see my gun down there and see if I can get some birds. Obviously, I can't shoot them in this part of the house, but I can shoot them on all the fences um, where they land down there. And hopefully we can get some sparrows, starlings, you know, all those the little guys that, that are invasive and shouldn't be around here and cause problems. So I think we can get it done. Okay, got a few uh, sparrows down there. Probably about 60 meters. I'm gonna put it at 55. Let's see what we can do. Oh, got him. And they're staying there. Yeah, the wind's tricky down there, and unfortunately over here in the shelter, I do not feel it at all, so it's hard to tell what the gusts are doing. But still a good spot. I think if we can get them a little bit closer than that, then we'll be on the money. So let's wait around, let's see what else we can get. <laughs> that one got smashed really hard. Um, just lying down here on the stoop basically. It's a nice flat surface, it's nice and clean, so I'm not going to get full of cow poo or anything like that. And I've got a view of the whole fence here, so I'm able to kind of take shots as they come in. And that one got hit really hard, so another sparrow down. Another one down, not pretty, but very, very effective. <laughs> well guys, it's been a really successful day of shooting. We got a lot of shots on camera, but more importantly, we we're able to sort out, or at least contribute towards sorting out a big pest problem. Um, we got a lot of sparrows down, we got quite a few doves down, and we got to see a new dove species that I've never seen before. So I think that's really, really cool. Um, the guns both performed really, really well. Obviously the wind now is starting to become a bit of a problem, so hence we're gonna call it a day. I'm gonna uh, relax a bit before my four and a half hour drive home. <laughs> Um, but it's been a fantastic time here at the, the dairy once again. I've loved every moment of it. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. If you want to see more videos like this, you can subscribe to my channel or hit the notification bell um, so that you can be notified of, of future uploads. I hope to see you next time. Thank you so much, guys. It's been an awesome time. If you'd like to see extra content like extended episodes, old uploads that YouTube took down, or early releases of upcoming content, 
head over to airgun101.com. You'll be able to find many other air gun content creators on the site and a safe place where we can build a community and help each other out. It's a real practical way of supporting content creators like myself without paying a cent as the sponsors of the website help contribute towards the running costs of my channel. Alternatively, you can find me on other social media platforms, on my vlog channel and on Patreon. Thank you so much for the support and I'll see you on the next one.